How could this have happened? How did things end up so bad for little old me? These are the questions that often occur when my name is brought up. You were such a sweet little boy. Whatever happened to you? The simple answer is, I have no fucking clue. I guess life happened. I'm starting to get so damned sick of all these questions and speculations so as a preventative measure, I've put together a PowerPoint presentation that clearly marks the periods in my life that shaped me into the remnant of a man that I am today. So now you won't have to think about it anymore. I present to you, my life. Anatomy. Translates it for international purposes. Hello again. Yes, so this is what I look like. Two legs, two arms, one head and some craziness in the middle. The sporadically deployed dots mark the areas of my body exposed to greater or lesser pains over the years. If we start at the bottom you will notice a red dot on my big toe, a toe that's been ravaged by severe arthritis ever since the mid-80s. Should be added that the 80s was a decade characterized by temptations and finally my body said, no. Whereupon my uric acid levels shot through the roof, hence the recurrent attacks of arthritis, or more commonly known as gout. Despite the unbearable pain that comes with gout, I've learned that no one will ever give you sympathy for that kind of illness. A bit like being laughed at for dropping your ice cream in the sand. But human beings are like that spiteful bastards who only look after themselves. So anyway, he wander further up towards the left knee. The perspicacious might already have noticed that the red dot is slightly smaller in this region. That's because it's a less serious injury, in my opinion, was good schlatter disease. And since I at an early age ignored the already swollen knee, orthopedists now believe that there may be a loose piece of bone in there, or a so-called sequester. If I walk longer distances without cushioned heels, the pain becomes so intense that I have to cancel the walk and relax for a while. This is also an illness with very few sympathies I have noticed, especially on social media where I once expressed the burden of my knee only to receive a pretty weak response, not a single like, and a harsh comment that wished there was a thumbs down icon. I had trouble sleeping that night but nobody gave a shit about that neither. So anyway, just like Christopher Columbus, we steer our ship north and end up at the right side of the groin. The apostrophe indicates that the tensions in this area are fixed. Previously there was a weakening of the abdominal wall that led to inguinal hernia. That means that the colon found a little hole inside of me and slipped out under the skin where it curled up like a little ball. The actual outbreak could not have been more badly timed as I was on an unknown location, fighting my way through a 10 day fast. My already weak body became even weaker and it took me 4 days to drag myself from the bedroom to the kitchen and then climb the kitchen counter to finally reach the phone where I could dial 911. Sure. You can laugh about it now but it was no fun being in that situation only to discover that the number one on the keypad was missing. I woke up three weeks later in a mental hospital where I was labeled with an extremely ambiguous diagnosis based on my fevered actions. A clear indication that I wouldn't find any sympathies here either. It makes me wonder, what the hell is the world coming to? So anyway, we have now reached the stomach. This imaginative jumble of tubes and cables. First impression tells me that someone took a long shot and missed. I have struggled with bloating for a long time and have passed gas in the most unsuitable places. It all culminated in an intervention held by my colleagues. Comparisons were made between my office space versus the local sewage station. A small collection was made among my colleagues where they scraped together enough money to buy me a tube of plastic cups and two gallons of vinegar. These mugs were then placed around my workspace and filled halfway with vinegar. This was supposed to neutralize the obnoxious odor that I was supposedly responsible for. Fucking bullshit. 
So anyway, we make a little pit stop at the heart. Here once existed an ominous murmur in the right ventricle, which after detailed studies proved nothing more than a malignant regurgitation who slipped off the tracks. So this is not why we are here. We are here because Mariah Fabergé broke up with me in the ninth grade and broke my heart with something that felt like a ballpoint hammer. Lesson learned. Only God forgives. So anyway. Throat, nose, mouth, all in order. Or I had the tonsils removed five years ago but it went well. You got ice cream afterwards. I couldn't turn it down despite a looming type 2 diabetes that could have cost me both legs in an impromptu amputation. But there is little time for reflection these days. Everyone just looks after themselves. A damn unsympathetic behavior one might think. So anyway, finally, the skull on the outside of Laura's diamond that won many metaphorical head butts over the years. However, it is the inside of the skull that was criticized by many throughout my childhood. People told me that the elevator never reaches the top floor. I didn't know what the hell it meant before I graduated. I thought they meant the elevator that the principal's office who back then had an out of order sign on it. I get pissed looking back on it now. I've since chosen to look forward in life and never backwards. If I were to look backwards for too long I would probably hang myself in the garage with an out of order sign around my neck. I had a difficult time back then to even socialize with more than three people in the same room I had to get proper shit faced. I started drinking enormous amounts of alcohol to curb my bad self-esteem. I drank in the morning, at noon, and in the evening, seven days a week, which brings us back to square one, the gout. Sympathy still shines with its absence. Salute. Eine kurze Animationsfilm von Patrick Ekle und Klanggestaltung und Musik von Björn Baumann.